Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today it's back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our play-by-email challenge against the devilish Mr. Laudrick, and it's been a challenge indeed. Uh, today we're going to look at the combat resolution for February 13th and February 14th of 1942. We're playing two-day turns, so we get a little bonus day. And uh, let's jump into it. Let's see what's going on on the map and what happened. Uh, one of the things I love about this game is the uh, same time resolution. So you put in your orders, the Japanese put in their, or Japanese player puts in his orders, and it all resolves at the same time. I've always loved uh, we go games like this uh, because it adds a you know quite a bit of unpredictability as you'll see in the near future uh, things can happen it's not turn based where you can just see you know exactly how your opponent moves and then counter that uh, things are happening happening dynamically so what are we looking for this time well there's been quite a bit of bombing in Rangoon uh, I would imagine he will continue that you can see he's also landing in Java. Uh, we just clicked over his ship there a second ago, or his ships, uh, that are unloading troops. Now, he does have a submarine out by Diego Garcia. Well, that's not good. Uh, let's hope he misses, and he does not. Uh, this is the peak, the tanker, the peak, that was dropping off fuel at Diego Garcia. I like to put some fuel in here. Just because it's a long ways, obviously, from, let's say, Aden all the way down to Australia, I like to have a drop-off point here, or a point where we could refuel if we needed to, or if ships get damaged out here, they have a place to go to. Unfortunately, Laudrick seems to know that as well. He's hit the peak. Now, that is actually a pretty low... Uh, point tanker. Tankers usually are worth quite a few points. Uh, I think this one's a little lower, but he got three torpedo hits in. We've got heavy fires, heavy damage, and it actually sinks. And so the peak is down. Now, I did have some anti-sub around there, but it seems that he has slipped the net and uh, got into a tanker. I never like to see that. Now, we've got a lot of tankers, but ultimately this game is decided on points, as we've talked about before. So he's just trying to outdo uh, what the Japanese did historically. And as part of that, he's landing here on the northern part of Sumatra at Sabang, and he's going to try to soften up the defenses with a bombardment of the coast. And you can see he's got two cruisers out here. These cruisers usually have really strong guns uh, and four destroyers. 35 casualties reported for us on the ground, three airbase hits, four runway hits, two port hits, uh, port fuel hits, three port supply hits, two. This game's really amazing. I mean, <laughs> the way it breaks everything down, but uh, he's now fully invading uh, the northern coast of Sumatra. So he's landed uh, northern Sumatra and also uh, on the kind of the eastern coast of Java, sort of in the middle of the island. And that, uh, you know, it, it's... It's two places that the Japanese are going to always go. They're pro always going to take them, generally speaking. Sometimes you can hold on to Java. Uh, but we've just got to slow them down as much as possible. All right, we're sighting a few ships near Perth, I would imagine those are submarines, if I had to guess. This is all of our recon and naval search planes seeing things and reporting back to us. seen disturbances in the water <laughs> all right he's gonna do a sweep out and over Chungking our capital at this moment um, 13 zeros come in just to see if we have any cap that we're gonna put in the air and now you see the bombing of Batavia will get going uh, we do put up some B-339s, but they're no match for 30 zeros that sweep up, up and over the town. And this is why you do sweeps, right? Uh, he puts 30 zeros over Batavia. It draws our cap up above the city. 
and we get two planes destroyed uh, before he sends in bombers. He always does this sweeping, and it's the way you should do it. Two zeros uh, over Chongqing, but we have no cap. We really have no air uh, for the most part in China. Now he's going to start bombing just to the east of Yan'an. We have uh, a group, a stack out here. He brings in about 70 or 80 bombers. Uh, we damage six of them. Um, so that's good. Maybe he lost a few planes. We take 13 casualties on the ground. We'll take that trade off most times. Now we damage six more planes and take 41 casualties. So both of those overall fairly good result for us. A few of these may go down as they try to get back to their airfields. Uh, we have no way of knowing. Uh, about 20 bombers here. We take 83 casualties on the ground. This is just to the southeast of Nanyang. I'm trying to get all of these troops back to our line. We have, you know, quite a number of troops that are stuck behind the line, and we're trying to get those out. Okay, 15 ANs come in on this same group southeast of uh, Nanyang. 33 casualties on the ground. We cause damage to one plane. Now, this is over Henyang. He had two Oscars, so this is a sweep. He's just sweeping up over the city, trying to see if we have any cap. Okay, we got some more bombing on the same stack. Uh, again, southeast of Nan or of uh, yeah Nanyang. Uh, 29 casualties. We don't cause any damage to his planes. It doesn't appear. Now, this is uh, the two stacks we have left here in southeastern China that we're trying to either get back or now I've started moving them towards the coast. They just need to get out of the center here where they can get surrounded uh, and move them around kind of like guerrilla forces. Now you can see we've got some B-17 fortresses that I'm sending over just to kind of let him know that we're here. Uh, we do bomb here at the port at Nadzab. Uh, we do cause one port hit. That's it. This also trains up these uh, pilots a little bit. So I've got them running some bombing missions. It's nothing huge. I've got them all the way up at 25,000 feet. I'm trying to avoid fighters if I can. I mean, I don't want to just throw these planes away. But we may as well, you know, go over there and just let him know, okay, we're here. We can do a little damage from time to time. Okay, this is into Henyang, uh, 10 Oscars sweep over the top. Sweep and bomb, and uh, Lodric is a master of it, so if you ever want to know how to play the Japanese side, watch how he has done it so far uh, in this game, especially in China. His bombing campaign has been uh, brilliant, I believe. Uh, 13 zeros uh, over Yan'an. We're trying to get these forces back to Yan'an. Eventually, we're going to have to just drop them back. Lan Chao is the most important place, really, on this whole inside side of the map. Uh, you've got to try to protect Lan Chao if you can. Uh, okay, he's got bombers now coming out of Balipa. Or do we? Well, no, he's got uh, fighters looks like coming out of Bally Poppin. Uh, these zeros, 23 of them coming over here. We put up a very small amount of cap. Uh, two of these Dutch fighters that aren't very good, uh, they're not going to last, and two of the three get taken down by the zeros. Now he's coming in to Rangoon. 41 Oscars coming over the top of a sweep of Rangoon. Now at Rangoon, we actually, you know, for the first time really in this game, really have true air cover over a town. Uh, Hurricane 2Bs, we got some of those up. We got some of the Flying Tigers up. You can see some tried to join the fight later. He ends up getting 21 Oscars over the, you know, top of the town. But we destroy four Oscars, and we only take two... Uh, destroyed on our side. Uh, one of the Flying Tigers, one of the Hurricane 2B Trops. We'll take that. That's one of the first times in this game, and we're only a few months into the game. One of the first times that we've kind of struck back a little bit, or at least, you know, uh, let's say played good defense. Uh, we've got good pilots here, good planes here, and he's going to have a very tough time cracking this nut with his Air Force anyway. Uh, now he's got a lot of land forces out here, so we'll see how that plays out. 
uh, Oscars, more Oscars over the top, 12 of them. We put up nine planes of our own. We ended up losing two more that time. So it was four to four uh, in the air battles over Rangoon during that little segment. Uh, 19 Ida's bombing just north of Kukong. I've got most, this has got kicked out of Kukong. We're trying to make it up to Hanyang. Uh, nothing happened here. It was overcast, but he just missed us evidently with his bombing run. Now he's bombing back this way past Wu Chow. This is into Lu Chow. Uh, six, oh, I'm sorry, six Tojos. That was just a sweep to see if we had anything down there. And now he's coming more over Rangoon. This time 37 Oscars are escorting in 27 Sallies. We got some more of those Hurricane 2B Trops up, which are really about the best planes we've got at this point. Uh, he did get some bombs away. So let's see. Oh, we only got one plane up in cap. Now, we did damage a Sally and destroy an Oscar, so that one plane did some good work. <clears throat> um, he did get nine runway hits and one airbase hit. Now, we've got a lot of engineers here to repair this stuff, but we just can't have it happen turn after turn. So far this turn, we've done a pretty good job of, of protecting Rangoon. Okay, these are more of our B-17s. This time I'm hitting Buna, or we're going to try to. It's moderate rain out here. Doesn't look like we hit anything. Again, I'm bringing them at a very high altitude. Uh, so if we do hit anything, it's almost kind of luck. But it gives your pilots some training. And who knows, you know, you could hit a port and do some damage. All right, so that air phase, kind of the usual bombing in China. Uh, we did protect Rangoon pretty well. I feel like maybe, I think we won the air-to-air -air battles like five to four. We'll take that. He's now landing at Cebu, okay? He took 17 casualties. This is a pre-invasion action, so our 25 coastal guns are firing out at him. Uh, we did disable some troops, uh, but he's going to end up landing. They're now landing on the beach. So 19 more casualties going on uh, for the amphibious assault, but that's obviously not going to stop him, just kind of collateral damage of a landing. Okay, uh, he's attacking this group that's directly on the main road south of Nanyang. He has got a massive force here at Nanyang um, and at Cyan. And he's trying, I thought he was trying to capture, this is our biggest force we have on the map. We're trying to get them back to our line. Uh, but it looks like he's turned his attention down here a little bit because we have a couple of stragglers trying to get out of here. And he just absolutely wrecks them with what he's got. Uh, hopefully they're just going to retreat. Oh, we had a core surrender. You never want to see that. Uh, looks like the majority, well, I said that too soon. We had another core surrender. I mean, he had us 1493 to 1 on assault odds. 60 casualties to 6,800 casualties. Uh, that's not a good result for us. Uh, Samarang, this is where he's landing here in Java. We only have a base force there and he captures that very easily. Now he's going to start dumping troops in there as fast as he can. Um, he took, or he didn't take any casualties. We took 116. Now he's attacking Sabang, and we actually hold on, shockingly. He doesn't have a lot of forces on the ground yet. You can see 1,500 troops. We still have almost 2,000 there. So he takes 73 casualties. We take 68. Now Ambon, which he's he's tried to attack several times. We've been bombarding him back. Uh, I don't think he brought enough here, and now that's kind of costing him as he sits on the beach. I'm sure he's coming to reinforce those troops, because I don't think he has enough there to take the base, and we keep lobbing artillery back at him. All right, uh, this is our, so that's the main action of this turn. Now we're expanding our fortifications where that's applicable. Uh, we'll also see any reinforcements that we got in this time here at the end of the day. 
So that's pretty much February 13th, and we'll be flipping over to February 14th here in a moment. Valentine's Day, where's your lover in 1942? Sending a letter home to, to your sweetie out here in the Pacific. I forget exactly how many phases there are per day. I, I think it's like 50 or 60. Uh, and you can, you know, once you play the game enough, you kind of get the uh, pattern of them. You know, merging subunits is one of these sub phases, leader reassignments. Uh, and now the very last thing is the new stuff that arrives. You can see we get a bombing group. I think these are just ones I moved around in Townsville and Cairns. Um, and then they'll combine, you know, or if you've moved a squadron one place, but a couple of planes had to stay behind the next, the game will automatically move the, the rest of that squadron there. And then they combine uh, 109th tank attack regiment. Uh, we get the 222 group wing and the 221 group wing. We got some anti-aircraft, 5th armored division came in. Now I think that's landlocked to the U.S. West Coast, so it's not going to do us a whole lot of good. Uh, we got first group army that came into Chongqing. Okay, uh, again here at Cebu, which is kind of this and Cagayan are our last two main bases in the Philippines, uh, but these troops are all starving out. We just don't have a way to get them supply, and so he's bombarding there. All right, looks like he's going to land at another location here in Sumatra, so kind of the northeast, up in the northeast. Uh, he has got troops coming off of transports as the full invasion of Sumatra has begun. Here comes the air operations phase is when the bombing comes. We just reported some wall, the walruses reported some ships off of Bombay. Now, I must admit, when I first went through the game, I did not realize the import of that or I thought it was a false reading. Uh, but I'll let I'll tell you it's not false uh, and I should have paid more attention to it because uh, it's going to become quite uh, interesting next turn, uh, let's put it that way. All right, he's going to sweep over Chungking with some zeros. We do not have cap out here. Um, I mean, it's good, probably, that he's continuing to do sweeps from his perspective, just to make sure. I mean, he's got a lot of fighters out here. He may as well, 
uh, to make sure that we're not just laying in wait with some fighters and we put them up at some point. Okay, 23 zeros uh, sweeping over Surubaya. So he's starting to probe around Surubaya. I would assume that means he's going to go south first and try to take Surubaya before he goes to Batavia. Although, well, I say that and now he sweeps over Batavia. You know, we're putting these B339s up. I mean, that's essentially suicide. Uh, 29 zeros against one Dutch fighter just ain't going to do it. But uh, he survives this time. Uh, now he's got 27 Oscars coming over Rangoon again today. Again, we get cap up in the air. Let's see how this battle turns out because uh, it's kind of an even match here. 27 Oscars. We had hurricane two or eight hurricanes, two flying tigers. We whoa, we took the worst of that one. Uh, one flying tiger destroyed, two hurricanes destroyed. Now 12 more Oscars in, we get a little more cap up. Uh, you know, we're trying to hold our own here. I thought we kind of did yesterday. Today, not as well. Nobody loses anything here on that sweep. Now he's sweeping over Heng Yang. It'll only be a matter of time before he brings major forces towards Changsha and Heng Meng. <laughs> Hang Meng. Hang Yang! Uh, he sweeps over Chungking. Okay, now Kung Chang up here. Again, another swoop. Flying a lot of sweeps this time. Now he's going to bomb this group southeast of Nanyang. He's already kicked this group back. Now we'll just try to get them to Ai Chang. Uh, we take 141 casualties, casualties on the ground. He damages two planes. Or <laughs> we damage two planes, I hope. Uh, now this is the other stack that's in southeastern China. He bombed this one on day one. Now he's bombing this one. Looks like about 56 bombers, 79 casualties. We had one damaged Ann. Now he's going to bomb the other stack. Okay, I didn't think he'd forget about them. He takes no losses. We take seven casualties. Now the, the other stack here southeast of Nanyang. He's going to start focusing on them, it looks like. 56 casualties reported there. Okay, more bombers in on that group. One damaged plane, 81 casualties. Now again, wow, he's uh, really, really hitting these guys hard. Two damaged planes, 49 casualties reported. Sweep over Heng Yang with his fighters. Nothing doing there. He's coming back to Rangoon. Uh, this time he's bringing bombers. 35 fighters, 26 bombers. We put no cap up. We actually damaged four sallies from our anti-aircraft. Um, severe storms. Okay, so he didn't get any bombs down on our runways uh, or our port. Uh, we damaged four planes. He was flying into very bad weather there. Thirteen Sonia's. Now this group again is going to try to get back to Hang Yang on this major road. All lo all roads lead to Hang Yang over here. Two damaged planes, ninety five casualties. Okay, he's going to bomb this group southeast of Nan Yang again. Thirty five casualties. His pilots out here, their bombing ability must just be through the roof at this point. They've run so many bombing missions that their experience and, and, and skill at bombing must just be fantastic. And that's what you want as the Japanese player is to just keep making those guys better. Here come our fortresses across the way uh, just to say hello. They don't hit anything. Again, from 25,000 feet, they did a port attack with four 500-pound bombs, uh, but they completely missed the port at Buna and then we brought three more again nothing nothing doing there all right his planes are going back to their bases to land all in all, I, I'm not completely upset uh, with what happened over Rangoon. He didn't get any bombs down, and we can repair our airfields and our ports very quickly there, as I mentioned, with all of the engineers we have. Uh, we're 
reporting a lot of submarine activity out by Suva are marauders. I have B-26 marauders there now, and they're spotting these submarines. Uh, 17 Sonyas coming in to bomb this group, trying to get back to Hen Yang, and we're trying to form a line right down this railroad, right? And then as you get up here, it's got to, it's, it goes a little bit further to the west, unfortunately, because he's taken all of these towns uh, or bases, but we're trying to, you know, build it around this way. Now, losing Nan Yang really hurt. I've never had that happen before, and it's a really brilliant move on his part. It opens up all kinds of possibilities, but we'll talk about that more in future episodes. One damage, Sonia. We took 38 casualties. Okay, 19 Idas bombing the group that got kicked out of Kukong. Looks like we destroyed one of those by flak. Uh, he's into Lu Chow now. Uh, no, he just swept over. Sorry, six Tojos on the sweep. Okay, so that's pretty much the air phase now is done. Not nearly as much bombing today. I think in the skies over Rangoon, our, we uh, lost seven planes. He lost five. Uh, when I'm talking, I'm talking about fighters. I don't think any of the bombers went down. We did damage several, so it's possible some of them went down. Now he's brought up more to Ambon. And that's what I said uh, yesterday. He was going to have to bring more here. And it looks like he did. He's now trying to bombard here. Uh, I just see AKs, but I'm sure he's got transports on the way. We don't hit any of the ships. Um, yeah, troops unloading at Ambon. He had to bring more here, which is good. That's what you want to see as the Allied player. His initial invasion fails. Uh, he's got to bring more. It slows him down. This has slowed him down at Ambon at least a week. Uh, so that's a good thing for us. Here comes the land move attack phase, which happens very late in the turn usually. He's going to try to take Sabang now. It looks like, nope, we hold on yet again. Uh, so this group up here, at least slowing him down. He took nine casualties. We took 75. I mean, we've got to be down to the end here. I mean, we don't have too much left. Uh, but they've made him attack over, uh, shit, I don't know, almost a week now. Uh, where he hasn't taken that base. Now he's attacking Ambon. Nope. Gosh, I say that every time. I always think his attack is coming, but this is us bombarding yet again, and he takes nine casualties. He still, you know, doesn't have enough troops there, he doesn't think, to launch an all-out assault on the Ambon base. And we just expanded back to a fort level two. So I'm still building fort levels there. He had knocked it down to a one, I believe. And now we've got it up to a two, which makes it even uh, more difficult. And that's the main action uh, for this turn. February 13th, February 14th. All in all, a pretty dang good turn for us. Uh, we didn't lose any ships, uh, except for the one tanker. We did lose that tanker, the peak. Uh, out by Diego Garcia. Um, there was an ominous sign in this turn that I totally missed, but we'll, <laughs> we'll be seeing that in the future. Um, other than that, though, really there wasn't a whole lot. I mean, he's still trying to, uh, I say trying to, he's succeeded in landing on, on uh, Sumatra, and that invasion is now in full thrust. He has also landed in Java, but he didn't really make uh, much headway this turn anywhere. Uh, we also, and you can see, we get just got two brand new battleships at Cape Town. We got the Nashville in the Panama Canal, and we get a few destroyers uh, up at Aden. We're also now getting these APDs. These are destroyer transports. They're very, very helpful later on. Uh, when we mount invasions of small islands, uh, they're very helpful for that task. Uh, we got a lot of stuff this time. We get a new sh uh, submarine, two new submarines, three new submarines, two of them on the East Coast, one out at Mare Island. And now we get a lot of cargo and transport ships. Get some motor launch. Uh, we get some new planes. 
We got that uh, convoy, which is a natural operation of the game and in a Cape Town, which brings a lot of supply with it. Uh, and that's going to do it. So all in all, good turn for the Allies, I would say. Uh, the battle over Rangoon has been a lot of fun so far. And we finally, finally, for the first time in the game, are, are somewhat on an equal, equal footing with him in the air at a location on the map. So that's exciting. Uh, considering we have just gotten absolutely devastated any time that we've tried to challenge his air war at this point. Uh, but we're finally just, you know, kind of solidifying in a few places. Uh, but when we come back next time, we're going to talk about the setup for the next turn. Uh, of course, I've been teasing the action up and around Bombay, and uh, that's coming. That's coming. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate it. This has been a hell of a game. Lodrick's doing a great job, especially if you're interested in the Japanese side. Uh, you know, he's probably the best Japanese player I've ever played. I mean, we're only a few months into the war, uh, but I've certainly never been in this position before and usually nowhere close. So he, he's done a great job. Uh, we're going to continue talking about where we set up and what we can do better and things I should have or shouldn't do, uh, etc etc but uh anyway it's a lot of fun when you're challenged that's the great part of this game uh anyway strategy game of dojo talk to you next time have a great one